Good morning and welcome. My name is Falonir, and in this series, I go over concepts and features within Leo on Board 2 to help you understand how the program works so you can go forward and make some really awesome stuff. In today's video, we're going to talk about if statements and switch cases. Now, for you Leo on Board 1 users, switch cases are a new thing for Leo on Board 2. It's basically an if statement for one thing and you compare it against different variations and then you do something if that variation matches. That may sound a little confusing. Let's step in layer on board two and give you some examples of how each one is used and situations where one may be more relevant to use over the other. Now that we're inside Leo on board two, let's go into our learn to Leo on board two deck. And we see here we have a switch case button and an if button. Uh, we're going to go over the if statements first, since those are the ones you're probably going to be more familiar with. And then we'll show situations where the switch cases may be more useful. So we're going to double click ifs. <laughs> and we're going to separate this into two different sections. So if statements using numbers and if statements using strings. So let's say you have a situation where you're generating either a random number or you have different numbers that you're working with and you want to know if that number that you're working with is a specific value or you want to compare it to other values, whether it's less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, anything like that, you would have if statements. So you would have, uh, let's say our variable, we're going to call it random variable, and this variable can be anything between 1 and 10. You would have an if statement and you would do something if the variable is one. Maybe you send a chat message. Maybe you change an image in OBS from one thing to something else. You do something if that variable is one. And then from there, I can just copy this right here. We would do a thing if the variable is two. We would do a thing if the variable is three. Uh, you can see how big this gets. It gets very, very large. In situations like this, when you are trying to find whether or not your number is a specific value and then doing something, your if statements are going to get very bulky because you're going to have a lot of different ones that are all trying to do one specific thing. This may be a situation where switch cases are more valuable. Now, if you're doing something like a simple comparison, is your variable within a certain parameter, is it less than this value? Is it greater than this value? A singular if statement or maybe even one or two nested if statements are going to be more useful because it's either going to be true or false. It's either going to be less than five where you do a thing or it's going to be greater than five where you do a different thing. So when you're doing not a specific comparison, but a general comparison, your if statements are going to be more valuable. Let's move over to the switch case real fast. And let's build the exact same thing, but with a switch case where our random variable could be one through 10 and we do something with the information. So we're going to create a switch statement. And what we're looking for is we are looking for this variable. We are looking for random var to be a specific thing, right? So inside our switch, we're going to make some case statements. What we're looking for here is for random var to be a specific thing. You can't cleanly make ranges. So that's why your if statement of if variable is less than five, you can do this here, but it's very, it's not very clean. So if we do this, um, anything we put into this statement, make another comment block here do a thing. So we're looking at random variable. Essentially, this says if random variable is one, do this thing. If random variable is two, do this thing. If random variable is three, do this thing. You can also add and say if random variable is one or five, do this thing. And it's written in a way that's much cleaner to see. Now, however, what we can do is say if random variable is one or five, we do this thing. If it's two, we do this, three, we do this, four, we do this, and we can add one more case statement and type default. This essentially says if we make it through all of these other cases, these checks essentially, and none of them match, 
then we're just going to do whatever's in this case statement instead. The way cases work is once we hit one that matches, we do the thing that's in it and then we come out of the switch. There's never a way for us to hit multiple of these, even if more than one is written with the same variable it's looking for. So if this case statement said one and five, and then this case statement said two and one, once we hit this case, as soon as it finishes doing the thing, it exits out of it. What you can do is you're looking to say, variable you're looking for is this, or this, or this, or this. We do different bits of information. And then a default is just the catch all for if none of these other things matched, do this other thing. Now, that goes true with strings as well. So let's say you're pulling the username of someone that triggers this button. And for those of you that aren't familiar with strings, strings are essentially just collections of characters. They can be letters, they can be numbers, they can be symbols, but they're collections of characters that are all kind of tucked together. A sentence is a string of letters that make words with spaces in them that separates them out. In this situation, we are pulling the username of whoever triggered this button and we're checking to see is the username Falonir? And we wrap it in quotes so that Leorn board doesn't think that Falonir is a variable. If you have, un if you don't understand what variables are, check out my video um, on variables that I did for Leorn board. It goes really in depth on how variables are treated within. So if username equals Falonir, and we put it in quotes so it knows it's looking for the string of characters, then we do a thing. If Let's say we are looking for a username to be a bunch of different things. So let's say that we want to do something different if our username is EasyBerry, or we want to do something different if the username is GingerJ91. What I'm doing here is I'm comparing the variable, the string held in the variable username with different strings to do a thing. This is much easier to write in a switch case because we're using one variable and we're just checking to see, is this variable this thing? Is this variable this thing? So what we would do is we'd go to our switch case. We would create this. Instead, we would have a trigger pool. Oh, excuse me. We would look for the username, call it username. We'd make a switch looking for username and we'd start adding some cases in. And what we're looking for is if the username is Falonir, then we would do something that we would list in here. Maybe we would send a specific chat message, like a welcome message for Falonir. Um, we could have a welcome message for Easy Berry. We could have a welcome message for GingerJ91. We could have a welcome message for Jazz the Zeke. This is a practical application of using a switch statement when we're checking a when we're checking one variable to see if it is very specific things. And of course, at the very end, we could have a default for, let's say, we, we, we can use chat as an example, if I could type anything. Chat message. <laughs> hey, Falonir. And then we would maybe copy it. Boom, 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 copy, copy, copy. And we would have the username for these individual people, EasyBerry, GingerJ, so on and so forth. And then for the default, it would just say, you know, welcome in friend, except you'd spell it correctly. So these are the situations where you would want to use a switch statement versus situations where you would want to use an if statement. If statements are very powerful, but they do get very clunky, especially when you start nesting them into each other. And it gets really, really hard to read as they kind of cascade into smaller and smaller boxes. So switch statements are going to be a lot cleaner to read, a lot easier to handle. They look better and they generally are going to function a lot easier in your programming. If you have any questions about switch cases and if statements, feel free to drop those down below in the comments or hop into our discord. We'd be more than happy to help you out. If you like this content, Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitch where I stream three days a week. If you want to learn more awesome features within Leorum Board 2, check out my Learn to Leorum Board 2 series where I go more in depth on a lot of different concepts similar to the ones we've covered here today. Otherwise, check out some of our videos where we release really awesome games for you built within Leorum Board 2. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and we'll see you in the next video.